welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a Mackenzie Child inspired teapot. So if you like this type of video, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload another video. Now, over the next several weeks, I have numerous Mackenzie Child inspired videos that I will be putting up. So make sure to check all those out and I will put a playlist for some that I already have done down below in the description box as well as at the end of this video. So let's get going and I'm gonna show you exactly how I did this. To begin with, I'm going to use some of this Rust-Oleum American Accents Paint and Primer, and this is in the flat black. And I just have this old teapot here. This is one that used to be my mother-in-law's, and it's a Falls Craft teapot. And I'm just taking this Rust-Oleum, and I'm spray painting the whole teapot black i'm going to make sure i also do the underside of the handle as well as the top side of the handle now i am not planning on actually using this teapot anymore this is going to be a teapot just for decoration for me now look how great this looks just painted all black i love this just the way it is but i want to give this the mackenzie child look to it so what I'm going to do is going at the widest part of our spout here, I am going to draw a line straight up and down from the top of our teapot down to the bottom of our teapot. And you can see I'm going to start here on the side and going from the top straight down. And I am just freehanding this. So if my line's a little bit off one way or the other, it's not a big deal. If you've seen Mackenzie Child type things, they're all just hand painted. They are not exactly perfect. And that's part of the charm to them. They are so gorgeous. If you've never been to their website, I highly recommend checking their website out. Their stuff is absolutely beautiful. Now, the width that I'm doing that because of the width of the spout, that is the same width I'm going to continue to go all the way around this teapot, making my line straight up and down about that same width. And that's about two inches, maybe two and a half inches. And I didn't measure it. I'm just eyeballing it. The only part that I'm trying to be really careful on is making sure my lines are straight when I'm going up and down. And here you can see my lines that I just drew on. And again, I'm not measuring them. I'm just simply going up and down with them. Now, excuse the dog hair that's on the sleeve of my shirt. I didn't realize it was there. I had just brought in my puppies in from outside. Now, sometimes I find it's easier to hold my teapot this way, and sometimes I find it's easier to turn it upside down and draw my lines. It doesn't matter whichever way is easiest for you. And you can see some of these have three and four lines over the top of the same line here. And I'm showing you the mistakes as well. That doesn't matter. Um, this is a very forgiving DIY, so don't worry if you make a few mistakes. What we're going to do now is we're just taking our Sharpie and we are going over the top of our lines. So our Sharpie is going to indicate which line we decided to go with. So where we have three or four lines, whichever one is the one that you actually want to use, we're going to go over that one with our Sharpie along with all our other lines. Now here you can see all of our lines with our Sharpie and that is showing which line we're going to use. We now have it all the way around. And they're fairly close in our width. Like I said, it does not have to be perfect. And now we're going to take our pencil and we're going to go around sideways. And again, we are going to try and keep this line nice and straight, but if it's a little bit off, it's not a big deal. Mackenzie Child stuff is all hand painted, and so everything is not perfect and everything is not exactly uniformed. 
And that is part of the charm to it. Your Mackenzie Child stuff is very whimsical and just fun. Here you can see the line that I drew. And right here you can kind of see an indention where the pattern that was already on the teapot already had that line. So I only needed to put one line going around underneath that and one line around above that to give me my four checks or my five checks there because there was another line that they had at the very bottom of the teapot that you may be able to see there. Now using some of this Waverly chalk paint from Walmart, I'm just using kind of a big brush. It's a medium sized brush here. And it is angled and I got these brushes also from Walmart. And I am just going to come and fill in every other square with the white. Now I'm trying to stay within the lines, but I am not getting it exactly perfect. All I'm trying to do right now is kind of get our pattern put onto our teapot. And so you can see I'm using a pretty big paintbrush for doing this. I'm just trying to get this on here. Now, once I get all these squares filled in, then I'll go back through with a smaller paintbrush and really clean up the lines and the edges of each of our squares to make sure that they look really nice and much more straight. Now you can also see here on the bottom portion of this teapot, closest to my hand there, you'll see on the black square, there's a white smudge. And that's because I made a mistake. I started to paint that square and realized I was painting the wrong square. I just wiped it off. It's not a big deal because all our black squares are going to get another coat of black paint over them as well. So don't worry if you make a mistake, if you get too much white going over too far into one of the black squares, that doesn't matter at all. This is a very, very forgiving DIY, and yet it looks beautiful when we're all done with it. Now, you also do not have to use this particular type of teapot. This is going to work with any type of teapot that you have. Just follow the same rules as what I'm showing you on here. And no matter what your teapot looks like, you can be able to do this. And now right here, I realized that I forgot to add in a square above the spout. And so I decided those squares on this side of the spout were a little too wide. So I just made a small line of squares going up and down the side and you can see them right there. That just kind of brought all my lines in together, made all of the rest of my squares look nice and uniform. Now I'm gonna be using a little bit of this Apple Barrel black paint and I just picked this up at Walmart as well. And I'm just gonna squirt a little bit on this paper plate. I like to just take some paper plates and rip little pieces of them off to use them to put my paints on as I'm using them. I just find it's easy and I can just throw them away and they cost almost nothing. So that's what I like to do and use for my paints when I'm painting. Now you can see that my paintbrush is quite a bit smaller now, but it's still an angled paintbrush. I find that with doing this, that the angled paintbrushes work the best for me. Now I'm going at this very slow and methodically to try and really straighten up these lines because the white really encroached over onto my black square. So I want to clean that up. And so this part does take a little while because I want this to look all nice and sharp looking now. And I'm going to do this on every single square. I'm painting over the black paint that was already on there in each of the black squares, as well as cleaning up those lines.
Now, again, don't worry if you make a mistake and get your black paint too much onto the white paint portion because we are going to be going back through with the white paint again after we've gone through with the smaller paint brush on each of our black squares we will then again go back through with our white paint and make those lines even sharper the edges of each of our squares even sharper with our white paint So again, this is a very forgiving project, but this does take a little time doing each one of these squares. Now, this is something that I just, I enjoy. I put on some music or I put on something on my computer to listen to, and I just go ahead and start painting these squares. And so even though this takes me a little bit of time doing these, I actually really enjoy this. And now we're going to come back through with our white. And we have two objectives now with our white. One, we are covering up the black paint that is showing through our white paint because only one coat is not enough to totally cover. So we are giving it a second coat to cover the black underneath. And we are once again coming and cleaning up those edges, making them even a little bit straighter than what they were. Giving a second coat to this white right here on the top. And how we're straightening this line up once again. And again, remember that the Mackenzie Child so the Mackenzie Child courtly check is all hand painted so it is not perfect and ours is not going to be perfect either by any means now once we get our line nice and straight we're just going to smooth out what's left now here I'll take you and let you see this one again. And that's looking pretty good there. It gives us some character to our squares and yet they're not perfect. Now what we're going to do is use some of this folk art metallic gold. And I also picked this up at Walmart. And we're going to be using a touch of that in just a minute. And we're also going to be using some of this Deco Art Americana in this Tuscan Red. Now, starting off here with some of this red, we are going to go ahead and we are going to paint this ball portion at the very top of our lid in this red because quite often you'll see that the Mackenzie Child, their courtly check adds in just touches of red or touches of green or gold. Those seem to be the three main colors you'll see with their courtly check pattern. And so we are going to use the red for this. Now that red I'm going to have to do three or four coats to get that the perfect coverage and everything that we need and get it looking like a nice bright red. So while that portion is drying, what we're going to do is I'm just taking a number two pencil here with a eraser on the end of it and all we're really needing is this eraser. It was the perfect size to make a few dots on here. And we are going to add in a few gold dots all the way around the top of our lid here. And I didn't even bother to put the gold paint on our paper plate. I'm just using it straight out of the lid. This is a really quick portion of this project. And you can see here how nice and even the dots look by just using the eraser of this pencil.
And if your dot doesn't turn out exactly like you want, just put some more paint on it and do it right on top of the one that you did. And here you can see we have all our dots in, so we're just going to set that aside and let that dry. And now we're going to come back to our teapot. Our teapot is nice and dry, so we're going to add some of these dots in right along the spout of our teapot. Now, when you're doing your dots, just make sure they're random. You don't want any straight line of dots. Just randomly put them in. And like I said, using this tip of the eraser just works perfect. It's a perfect size dot for doing this. And once you do your dots and they dry, if they still are showing some black through them, it's very easy to just go ahead and do another one right over the top of it. And now we're almost done with the spout part here. And that is looking so cute and adorable and whimsical. Now we're going to take and do the same thing right along the top of our handle. Now, again, make sure that you are kind of putting your dots in back and forth or in a triangle type look or something. You just don't want them in a straight line. And like I said, this portion of our project goes really fast. The only portion that really takes a little bit is just getting your lines nice and straight for your squares. And again, they don't have to be perfect because nothing in the Mackenzie Child's um, look is absolutely perfect or exact. It's not machine done. It's all done by hand, and that's part of the charm of it. Now we're going to go ahead and add another coat of our paint on here. You can see how it just really faded as it dried. And like I mentioned, we are going to do this three or four times before we get this paint to kind of be this color all the time. And you can see that is starting to look great. I'm loving that. Now what we're going to do while the lid is drying, we are going to take our teapot handle and we are going to add some dots along the side of it here. And again, make sure your dots aren't in a straight line. What I like to do is try and get some of my dots just kind of going off the edge of the handle going off the edge on the top and off the edge on the bottom i think that just adds more character than if they were all just evenly placed right in the center going all the way around the dots just really add to the whimsy of this this is just it's a really fun project this is a fun type of decor. And now here we are going to give the top of our lid, our red portion, another quick coat here. And now while that's drying, we are going to start to Mod Podge our actual teapot itself. And I picked up this Mod Podge. We are just going to add a few thin coats of our Mod Podge on here just to seal this in and to give it a little bit of a shine. Now I'm using a satin Mod Podge. You could use a satin, a flat, a gloss. That is totally up to you. That's your choice. Now I make sure that I give it a good coat on every portion. The whole tea kettle itself, the spout and the handle, the top and the underside of the handle, I want to make sure that it all gets a nice coat with this Mod Podge just to totally seal this paint. And just getting all the parts about that spout as well as all the portions of our handle, the underside, both sides along with the top, we're just going to make sure everything is nice and covered with this Mod Podge. 
And then make sure you also give a nice coat of your Mod Podge to your lid as well. And you just want to make sure you cover all the parts of your lid. And now here is our finished Mackenzie Child inspired teapot. Is that not just adorable? I love the way it looks. I think it's so pretty, so fun. I just, I can't wait to decorate with it and just use it. Make sure you check out my Mackenzie Child playlist that I will have at the end of this video. And I'll also link it down in the description box below. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Thanks so much for watching.